All right, guys, second video for the day. The feds had a secret backup plan to arrest Derek Chavez in court for police brutality if he was cleared of George Floyd. Just goes to show there was nothing this guy was ever possibly going to do that was going to allow him to walk from this from this, this courtyard. Um, it's good to see that we still have a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a fair and balanced kangaroo court. I mean, normal court, right? Because yeah, obviously we'll go through. We'll break this down. I'm I'm not, I'm not I'm not surprised. I'm really really not. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, well, obviously we'll break it down. We'll let you know what's happening, and we'll go from there. So, uh, secret Department of Justice plans had to arrest Derek Chavez in court. He had been cleared of murdering George Floyd. Multiple sources told the Star Tribune and federal prosecutors were ready to move in and charge the white ex-cop on federal counts moments after not a not guilty verdict on charges of second degree third murder as well as manslaughter or in the event of a mistrial. Department of Justice prosecutors had now planned to bring civil rights violation, uh, violations, uh, violations uh, charges akin to hate crimes, the police brutality against Chavez and the three other cops on duty with him with Floyd was killed in May 2020. Their secret plans saw the DOJ investigators collab with their state counterparts at Minnesota U.S. Attorney's Office to arrange to change uh, to to charge Chavez by a process called a criminal complaint, which does not require a grand jury and would have sped up the process of a first charges against the former policeman and admit fears his guilty to folk would prompt fresh riots. Oof, this is not looking good for for them for a Mr. Um, oh, So if you ever want to make an argument that the jurors were threatened into claiming this guy was guilty when you don't think he was, um, the fact that they're saying that they were going to put fresh charges against him because of fears of fresh riots is not a good thing to say. Ultimately, the backup plan did not have to be used after Chavez was found guilty of all three counts. He was convicted of second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter taken into Minnesota's maximum prison. He would be sentenced on June 25th after the courts pushed it back from its initial date of June 6th. He faces up to 40 years in prison. The DOJ is now planning to indict him and the three cops involved in Floyd's death on civil rights charges, a source told the Tribune. They're really going after this guy, aren't they? The federal investigator into Floyd's death is uh, separate to the, the state's case, which led to Savage's trial conviction last week. It's been running in parallels with the federal authorities presenting evidence before a grand jury of 23 civ uh, civilians who decided if there was a probe, uh, probe cause to bring charges against disgraced officers. Three other cops, Alexandra Coogan, Thomas Lane and Tsu Tao, faced trials together on August 23rd on state charges of aiding and abetting second-degree murder and manslaughter. They denied the allegations and were fired from their jobs at Minnesota PD in the wake of Floyd's death. The Minnesota AG's officers wants to also add charges of aiding and abetting and third-degree murder to each of their cases. Now the DOJ wants to indict Chavez on a federal civil rights violation over both Floyd's death and the 2017 incident where he knelt on the back of a 14-year-old boy's neck for nearly 17 minutes. And funny, did he die? Did the kid die? Because uh, if he didn't, you know, that would be an argument against the guilty verdict. Clang, Lang, and Thor would be indicted over Floyd's death. Chavez has never faced any charges over the 2017 incident, details of which surfaced last year as state prosecutors asked judge to allow them to use the case as evidence of a former cop's use of force in his trial. The judge banned the prosecutors from telling the jurors about the 2017 incident. In court documents, the prosecutor said the body cam video shows Chavez and other officers responding to a domestic assault on September, September 4, 2017, after a mother said that she was assaulted by her teenage son and daughter. The body cam footage has not been released. The officers arrived to find the 14-year-old boy laying on the floor of his bedroom while on his phone. They ordered him to get up because he was under arrest. When he refused, Savas grabbed him and struck the teen in the head 
with his flashlight multiple times to court documents say. Chavez then grabbed the boy by the throat before hitting him with her flashlight. Prosecutors had argued that this occurred less than a minute after the officers first encountered the boy. Chavez then applied the neck restraint to the boy who briefly went unconscious and then placed him in a prime position with a knee in his back for 17 minutes till the paramedics arrived, the court documents state. He held his knee on the boy who was bleeding from the ear even after he said he was in pain and couldn't breathe, the prosecutor said. According to the court documents, the boy's mother asked Chavez for four separate times to take his knee off her son. She also noted that her son was in handcuffs and couldn't do anything to Chavez at that point. The mother said Chavez had hit her son with a flashlight for no reason. Chavez took his knee off the teenager after paramedics arrived. The paramedics who asserted the boys uh, to assess the boy briefly while he was held down noticed that he would likely need stitches for a wound to his ear. So look at the end of the day, the Chavez seems like he's a real piece of work. My argument with the, the court case was that at the end of the day is that there's enough there for reasonable doubt. Do I think he did it? Do I think he he, he killed him? Who knows? Right? There, there's an argument for the, the drugs in his system. Uh, there's also an argument that maybe it was the knee on the back. There's an argument that maybe if, if this Floyd hadn't uh, bothered resisting so much, maybe he'd be still in a jail cell. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a, a forensics guy, right? I'm just a fox on a YouTube channel. But at the end of the day, the fact is is that this Floyd obviously does seem like he's a real piece of work too. But as for this, I, I think it's kind of disgusting that they were planning on a second round of charges just to get him off the street because they were worried about rioting. If you're worried about rioting, you arrest the rioters when they riot and charge them, and that's the end of the rioting. But anyway, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. To be honest, I'm not surprised that this. Uh, I I would expect them to try something like this, but this to me just makes it seem like it's more of a kangaroo court than it is an actual fair trial. Like if you're going to try and arrest him the minute he's found not guilty. Um, only to try and try in some other court, so where you might get a more speedy. It's like, oh, it's like the guy's found not guilty. Leave it alone, sort of thing. But obviously, this didn't have to happen because obviously he was found guilty, and we're now waiting for the appeals. Apart from that, guys, let me know your thoughts are in that comment section below. If this video has been helpful, please smack that like button. If you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe. Apart from that, guys, I will see you in the final video for the day. Have a great night, enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you then.